My name is Isaac Bacchus. I am from South Africa, as you can tell, I'm sure. Um, I grew up um, understanding the gospel and uh, believing that the gospel was true and thinking that made me a Christian. And somehow I missed um, that I needed the gospel throughout my childhood years. And it was only in my early 20s as I joined a church preached, by a, a <laughs> preached at by a TMS graduate uh, that I came to understand my own sin and my own need for the gospel. And for the first time, um, I came to see what it meant to really believe the gospel. Believing the gospel means believing that you need the gospel. And um, I was very excited almost immediately, having uh, thought I was a Christian all along, and all of a sudden I was very zealous. Um, and so the natural thing to do, going to my pastor, uh, is to say, hey, I want to um, I wanna go to seminary. You, you're from TMS, right? I want to go to TMS. And my elders very wisely counseled me to just slow down a little bit and wait a little bit and become a little more established in the faith. Um, and so it would be about 10 years later of me trying various other things and not being satisfied by them uh, that I uh, went away. I went away with my wife on our very first wedding anniversary, actually, and we uh, took the weekend to just talk about our future. We both wanted to be in full-time ministry, so we talked about that and we prayed. And we came back from that firmly persuaded that uh, this is the time, now is the time, we'll get the ball rolling. So um, I went to my pastor saying, hey, um, I want to enroll in seminary and... Uh, he encouraged me to do that. Uh, so did my elders this time. They said the time is right. And um, uh, so I was thinking I would apply to the Masters Academy International in South Africa. And so my pastor, who is a TMS grad, as I've said, said, why don't you, um, why don't you just apply to TMS? Just see what happens. Uh, so I did. I got the paperwork. I downloaded everything. I completed it. And I uh, sent it in. I'm very excited. And uh, we got accepted. And everything went so smoothly. And I, I don't think I'll ever in my life I will forget uh, my wife and myself sitting on the couch, so excited, having received the email from Christine saying we've been accepted and uh, calling, calling the seminary and saying, what's next? What do we do now? You know, thinking uh, the hard part is behind us. We filled out this extensive application. This is great. Um, and so Christine said, well, you'll see in that application, uh, the, the email I sent you, the confirmation that there's an attachment that's called an I-20. Now, I had no idea what an I-20 form is, and most of you don't, but the international students will know that it's the bane of our existence, the I-20 form. I thought, okay, I can fill out a form. That's easy. So I opened up the attachment, and filling out an I-20 form means proving that you have $34,000 to pay for your first year's projected expenses. So... I, I remember us sitting there in front of the computer, <laughs> reading this I-20 form, and my wife and I turned to each other and said, okay, that was a nice idea, TMAI, here we come. <laughs> um, but uh, that, that was the beginning of the Lord's journey and just proving His faithfulness and His gracious provision to us, and through the next two months, uh, the Lord provided. We started out... Um, I, you know, I started out thinking, we have a car that we can sell, and we have a little bit of savings from the first year of our marriage, and we have maybe 10% of what we need, uh, and that was it. Um, but the Lord just during the next two months um, humbled us. Friends came alongside of us from church and added their own savings to ours. Uh, members from the church graciously provided for us. Uh, a couple from America who we had never met before, um, uh, but who knew my, my pastor from when he studied here, uh, volunteered that they would pay our tuition for the first year of our studies here. And um, before we knew it, we had filled out our I-20 form and we were on the plane uh, with our four suitcases and we we're on our way to LA. Uh, since our time here, the Lord has taught us so much. There are so many lessons. Um, but I would highlight just two of those for you. Uh, the first is that I have become utterly convicted and persuaded of the fact that I cannot serve the Lord in my own strength. I am incapable of serving in my own strength. And he brought that home to me in my very first semester. Um, my, my procrastination fueled hope had been focused on the Thanksgiving break of that first fall semester. And that was going to be the time when I was going to get all my assignments done that I hadn't completed yet. <laughs> And it was maybe two days into that break that I realized this is not going to happen. I still have to work and I still have to do all these other things and we're not going to make it. And I just kind of broke down. I sat there, another of me sitting down on the couch with my wife. And for maybe the third time in my life, I cried and I said, we're going to have to go home. You know, as an international student, I need to maintain a GPA. And there's no way I'm going to make the grades. And we're going to have to go home. And we're going to have to face our precious family from our home church and explain to them how I'd squandered all their sacrifices. 
and it's all done. I'm back. I'm sorry. And um, the Lord just showed his graciousness to me in that moment and through his divine empowerment and my wife's faithful help uh, and the graciousness of the professors that I still don't understand. I somehow managed to make it through that first semester. And the Lord has continued to pound that lesson home into my soul in every subsequent semester after that. And so I've just realized I cannot serve the Lord in my own strength. And brothers, I would just say to you that neither can you. And secondly, the second lesson that the Lord has taught me is just that he is a gracious provider. And he's provided for our needs in so many ways. We came to seminary um, living in a small 400 square foot apartment that we were so thankful for. And when our son was born, uh, we realized there was no way we could live there. And within a month, we had received a, a new place where we can say that was twice as big. And... Going to a place that's twice as big meant we only had enough furniture for half of our apartment. So the Lord sent us a check for $1,000 so that we can furnish this new place. And he's continued to provide for us. Um, right in the beginning, money was very tight. And I remember thinking it was about the Wednesday of the week and I was going to get paid on the Friday and thinking, I need to choose. I have money for gas or I have money for food for the rest of this week and I need to choose. And before I had to make the choice, we got a Ralph's coupon in the mail so we could buy food with the Ralph's coupon and I could fill up the car. And since then, the Lord has sent us uh, numerous checks in the mail, envelopes of cash in our student box, and he's provided for us in so many other ways. Um, I bought a car when I got here and it was a foolish decision. It was a junker of a car and it broke down and had it hauled off to the junkyard. And the Lord provided us with a car that's so amazing that I felt guilty in the beginning driving the car because it's so nice. Um, but I still praise the Lord for his graciousness and faithfulness when I get in that car because it's just an object lesson to me of his faithfulness. And I could tell you many other stories. Um, the Lord sent us on vacation, and I, I could go on and on. I feel genuinely this might seem to you like an exaggeration, but I can feel that I can say with John, his last verse in the Gospel of John, he says, Now there, there are also many other things Jesus did. Were every one of them to be written, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that were written. And that's my testimony of the Lord's provision for my life uh, during my time in seminary. As for the future, um, I've been accepted into the THM program, so we'll be around for another while. But after that, my wife and I desire to go back to Africa and to continue to serve the Lord, not in our own strength, but in the strength that he provides for us. Thank you.